Hello my legend mothers and welcome to the painting video of the lower part 1A5. As usual, I start cleaning the whole model with the alcohol and with the brush. After cleaning I start painting the turret with a brown color from Gunza and my airbrush is Fengda BD-130 with 0.3mm nozzle. I love how primer can change the look of the model just by the one color. For the main color I just choose Vallejo Russian Green and just a little bit of black and after all mixing I start spraying the whole model with this other color. As you can see, the color is really nice and looks excellent. We must don't forget on the sides as well, which they're covering the tracks. And of course now the whole tank in this lovely color. And as you can see I've got finally new airbrush. My airbrush is Fengda AG100. This airbrush is more better, expensive and it looks fucking amazing. Wow. For gluing the tan tracks I just use the super glue and we must rougher the rubber tan tracks for strong hold. For painting the wheels I just use a flat brush and anthracite color made by Rail. On the main drive wheel some polishing with a nicely Vallejo oily steel color, just a small amount color on the brush and paint it. Like before, I also use a super glue to glue the tantrix to the wheels. Testing the fitting. 
and the Tantrix are on its place. The worst struggle on this model was for me the fenders for the sides and for the tracks, but I made it somehow and it looks quite nice. And for the camouflage scheme I just use classic Revel black color and I start spraying the camouflage pattern by freehand and it was really amazing, relaxing and I'm happy how it turned out. For the second color I just use a light grey mixed of course with a little bit of black because it will be too bright for the model. After the camouflage painting, I start painting small details on the model like towing cables, axes, shovels and some other details, of course handles. For the new handles I use copper as you saw in the previous video and I use all the steel color for paint and the small details like the wood handle on the MG42 I guess because it looks like that and of course paint it with a nicely metallic color. Don't forget on the shovel and of course on the axe as well. Painting these tubes, or I don't really know what is it, and I think it's made from metal, so again, all this steel color. We must don't forget on the beautiful copper wire cables and paint them. For the smoke launchers I use Emma Mick color dark orange.
adding the last camouflage snakes which they missing on some spots with a black color. I was go outside to varnish the whole model with a glossy varnish, lacquer varnish. And here's my question. Why the enamel wash from Amomic washed out the lacquer varnish to the almost paste plastic? What's wrong? I don't know. After the fail with a wash, I just start covering model with a black acrylic wash but it didn't uh, turn out well and it just flows on the model as you saw cutting precisely decals with a sharp knife and after that i will transfer them to the hot water When the decals is ready, I transfer them to the model like the turret and uh, of course like front of the tank and where the decals must be. For the decals to sit on its place, I just use decal set from the ammo make and of course decal software to make them copy the underneath details. Don't forget on the license plate because modern tanks have them. Interesting indeed. And I use decal software as you can see. Because the weathering didn't turn out well, I just use for the first time I think. I can remember uh, the splashing effect with just the uh, tweezers and the uh, light brown color for the sides and front of the model and of course with a uh, dark brown for interesting color deviation. Now I adding some other additional weathering with a dark brown color on the wheels and with these few steps is model finished. One thing what is missing is a matte varnish and this is it. I hope you like the model and see you next time.